Hi everyone, this is Red Illegal. Welcome back to the channel. This is episode 11 of A Broken Heart, a WCW 1998 save. I'm kind of ready to uh, book Super Brawl, but I, I'm just doing this sort of quick intro to show you what we've got booked for Super Brawl. As you can see, we're still only on Tuesday week four. I've just recorded the um, final Nitro. I just wanted to go through the matches. Some of these, or most of these, have been announced, but not all of them. So we've got Bam Bam Bigelow versus The Giant. Bret Hart and Randy Savage will take on The Outsiders. Buff Bagwell, Chris Jericho take on Lex Luger and Ric Flair. Chavo Guerrero Jr. taking on Raven. That is the no DQ match. Diamond Dallas Page against Conan for the US title. Goldberg takes on Hollywood Hogan. Jim Neidhart will take on Sid Vicious. That was really just to get Sid on the card. Uh, Los Locos take on Mortis and Raft. That's just to get another tag team match on there. Ray Trailer takes on Saturn. Um, I'll tell you now, Ray Trailer is going to win that one. I, 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 it, again, I'm just trying to get him over a little bit. Um, although I am kind of cooling it with him a little because there's others, I think, that are ahead of him now. Um, Sting takes on Kurt Hennig in a title for title match for the world title and the TV title. Um, actually, now I've just thought about that. Would the TV title be defended on a pay-per-view? Um, uh, well, well, it's wrestling. We can do what we like. Um, Steiner Brothers take on the Faces of Fear for the tag team titles. So now that I've taken you through the matches, next up, we'll go through the results. So let's get into the results then for Super Brawl, Sunday, week 4 of February 1998. Super Brawl 8, this is. And a starting rating of 69, which is quite disappointing. It's an opening hype video. Yeah, maybe I could have had a couple of the other major stars in there. Possibly, you know, Ric Flair, maybe. But it is what it is. Still quite disappointed, though. Um, yeah, one of the um, storylines has lost heat. But it is what it is. Let's get into the action. Chavo Guerrero taking on Raven in a no-disqualification match. So these two guys um, have kind of been at it after Raven cheated to beat Guerrero in our very first show, actually. I've got a feeling it might have even been our very first match. I can't remember. But a disappointing one, this one, uh, 49. Uh, Raven's looking stale, so need to sort of look at his gimmick soon. But they did have good chemistry, so God knows what that score would have been if they didn't. Chavo Guerrero got the win in 11 minutes 43 by pinfall with a gory bomb. <laughs> yeah, uh, terrible match. Guerrero getting the win. I don't think this one's over yet, though. So possibly some more to come. After the match, they continue to fight. Chavo and Raven still going at it. Rating of 47. Then we've got some tag team action. Los Locos taking on Mortis and Raph. Yeah, this was just to get a couple of tag teams on the card. I wasn't expecting much. 65, subpar wrestling, little heat. Mortis and Raft defeated Los Locos in 8 minutes 22. Mortis pinned Juventud Guerra. I hope I'm saying that. I hope I'm uh, pronouncing that right. Uh, beat him with a super kick. Um, and Guerra was the weak link. Some green there, though. Yeah, okay. Ray Trailer then has a pre match promo as he looks to take on Saturn. And he also talks a bit of trash on Eddie Guerra, who he's obviously feuding with at the moment. Rating of 52. Um, yeah, not not much to say really. It's just a it's just a pretty much promo, isn't it? So I did get um, a warning when I booked this show that that we've had Trader and Saturn quite often recently, and I can only imagine it's happened in B shows, which I don't book. I always auto book them, so I've got to kind of look out for that. Actually, um, yeah, especially if I'm going to be you know if we've got two B shows and they're going to have matches I could potentially be putting on main shows and events, and I'm going to get that penalty. Kind of didn't think about that one. But yeah, 52 rating, and looks like Trailer did a masterful job of improvising. The match itself got a 24. But why have we been having that match so often then? That is absolutely terrible. Trailer got the victory in 9 minutes 23 by submission. Um, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, they're both jobbers. I, guess. I think at the time, actually, I'm sure Saturn was well uh, recognisable. And trailer may have that may have been that short period when he was recognisable when I booked this. Yeah, that's uh, that's disappointing. And yeah, here we go. As the fourth time this matchup has been done recently, it needed to be better. I don't want to talk about that one anymore. 
Gene Oakland then interviews uh, the Steiner brothers ahead of their title defence against the Faces of Fear. Again, it's just another standard pre-match promo from the Steiners on their opponents, the Faces of Fear, and they will be defending the tag team title. When it comes to pay-per-views, I don't tend to do too much with the angles. It's all about the wrestling. Um, we might do one or two that are a little bit... Um, different or a little bit more the meat on the bone if you like uh but yeah my majority of the time they're they're pre-match promos their interviews and you know that kind of thing so that's that's basically all this is and the match gets a 68 steiner brothers defeated the faces of fear in 10 minutes 40 when meng was counted out while fighting scott steiner uh, during the match we saw ted dibiossi distract meng and also distract the barbarian now that. I didn't book that. I did not book that because these guys are faces. That's interesting. Um, they've gone. I, is this a thing? They've gone into business for themselves. Road agent knows. No, I definitely didn't put that. I got. Do you know what? I'm starting to lose the plot. I I've booked. I I'm starting to lose the plot. Whatever. Um, the Steiner brothers um, hold on to their belts. Then Oakland talks to Roddy Piper, and he's just asking if you know, uh, you know, Roddy, you know, is there any chance that you are going to interfere in Conan's challenge for the U.S. title as he takes on Diamond Dallas Page? And you know, Roddy Piper's like, you know, I'm I'm not going to go and do that. I'm not the kind of guy who's going to you know interfere in a match and you know force someone to lose. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we've been having problems lately. You know, we don't see eye to eye. I'm not going to go and, you know, stop him from trying to better himself. I, You know, in fact, as a matter of fact, I want him to better himself. I, I don't think he's ready. I don't think he's as good as people are saying he is. And this is basically just, I wanted to get Piper on the card. I wanted to sort of um, do something with that storyline. Uh, good decision. It's gained heat. Got a 78, decent rating. But yeah, this is all, this is just, that's all it was serving. And, you know, get Roddy Piper on the card somehow. And then the match itself, good heat, decent wrestling. Diamond Dallas Page defeated Conan in 11 minutes 48 by disqualification. And it's Diamond Dallas Page's defense number three of the United States heavyweight title. So yeah, a rating of 63, mm, disappointing, maybe. Uh, yeah, uh, I wanted, I'm trying to push Conan. Um, DDP needed to defend that belt and it just made sense to have that. I, I, Conan was um, never going to win. The belt, uh, but I didn't want him to lose cleanly, so DQ finish. We then got promos from Bret Hart and Randy Savage, and then a sort of separate promo. But right after the first one, we have the Outsiders, and it's just they're just pre match promos ahead of their match again. They're just standard pre match promos. We're going to beat you because of this, that, and the other, and then the other team are, you know, we're going to beat you because of we're better than you, and blah 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 blah. That's all it is. Rating 79 though boosting those ratings there but the match is what it's all about and 77 isn't too bad great heat and good wrestling Bret Hart and Randy Savage defeated the Outsiders in 13 minutes 2 seconds when Bret Hart forced Scott Hall to submit with a sharpshooter I was always going to give these guys the win um, I'm trying to get Bret over and I don't want to sort of leave Savage out in the cold he is going to start jobbing to some up and comers so I want to sort of give him a little bit of momentum where I can. Uh, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, the, the kind of ages they are. I mean, to be fair, these guys aren't spring chickens either. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at these two sort of now starting to transition into, you know, let's help some other guys get over now. So that, that's what it was. Uh, yeah, uh, two members of the Alliance taking on the Outsiders, also known as two members of the NWO, rating a 77. We then got a taped angle. It's um, a video. It's like the hype videos for uh, you know Bam Bam Bigelow and the Giant. It's one video, maybe just featuring both guys. You know, showing their sort of menace and, and power, and you know a few clips from some of their matches and some of the the action shots of them, post match brawls, all that sort of thing. Just ahead of their match, rating right seventy one, sixty five, sixty five for the match. Bam Bam Bigelow drew. With the Giant in 9 minutes 8 seconds following a double count out. It just kind of made sense, I think, 
two really big guys going at it. I want to push Bam Bam, but I don't really want to job the giant. So we've just gone with a draw. Gene Oakland speaks to Elizabeth regarding Lex Luger and Buff Bagwell. They are both involved in tag team action next as Buff Bagwell will team up with Chris Jericho and they take on Lex Luger and Ric Flair. Just ask him which corner you're going to be in. There's a kind of little sort of love triangle sort of thing going on. Maybe not. Maybe love is a strong word, but uh, you know Bagwell and Liz are um, trying to. Um, sorry, sorry. Bagwell and Lex are trying to get the attention of Elizabeth. Uh, but Buff Bagwell comes out, and he, you know, again, this is what he did before. She's going to be in our corner. Of course, she's going to be in our corner. She's going to be in my corner. She's looking out for me, and that's all that is really. Rating of sixty-seven. The match itself, 69, mm, yeah, maybe I was hoping for a little bit better. I can't see who has really let that one go. Um, oh, well, I mean, I can see, I guess, Buff Bagwell, 48. Uh, Lex Luger only 64 as well, that's disappointing. But okay, here's what it is, Buff Bagwell and Chris Jericho defeated Lex Luger and Ric Flair, so yeah, I'm trying to get the youngsters over. In 14 minutes 37, when Chris Jericho submitted Lex Luger with a lion tamer. And during the match, we also had um, Elizabeth distract Lex Luger. And I've done this before. It wasn't a kind of, I'm going to deliberately distract this guy. It was more a case of, there she is looking all pretty, and Lex Luger is maybe distracted by that. Perhaps trying to get her attention, flexing his muscles, going to talk to her, whatever. Didn't force... Um, didn't didn't force Luger to lose, but it, it, it happened during the match. Lex Luger was distracted by Liz. But yeah, that's uh, that's what it is. Rating of 69. Then we've got Gene Oakland, and he interviews Booker T. Um, literally, uh, I was booking this show and kind of looking. I had a few minutes to spare, and I was looking, who haven't I used? And I hadn't used Booker, which annoyed me a little bit because I probably should have done. But, you know, you can only have a certain amount of people on the card. And, you know, Oakland's asking Booker T, you know, you've you've made it known that you're not sure about um, a singles run. And, you know, how, how are you feeling? How do you think it'll go? And, you know, Booker's kind of, well, I would more than anything in the world want, you know, my brother Stevie to remain with me as a tag team partner. You know, but he's, for whatever reason, thinking about the end of his career and he's looking to wind down and I don't really have much of a choice. I, I just, I hope Stevie's always there for me. Um, that That's that's kind of all, all this is. I couldn't really think of too much to do with Booker, but we might kind of do something with this, um, with the B Booker and Stevie Ray. I, I might not necessarily go down the obvious route of them falling out, but we might just do something a little bit different with, with these guys and, and how how we sort of transition Booker into a fully-fledged solo guy. Jim Neidhart takes on Sid Vicious. What an awful match. 58. <laughs> it says decent. In a decent match, Sid Vicious defeated Jim Neidhart in 6 minutes 57 by a pinfall with a powerbomb. This was just to get Sid over. Uh, we, we, when I booked, I normally um, pre-book pay-per-views a good at least two weeks, if not the, the full four weeks ahead of time. And I think Sid was still only well known when I did this. I think he's up to star now. So yeah, maybe I could have thought about having him face someone a bit a bit better. But there we go, it is what it is. It's poor, but it's a victory for Sid. And then we've got promos from Goldberg and Hollywood Hogan. 87, that's a good boost, hopefully that'll I mean unfortunately you get more from the matches, so we need we need the match to produce something. But yeah, Goldberg and Hollywood Hogan, separate promos, but within the same sort of segment, one after the other, Goldberg and Hogan talking about how they're going to beat the other guy. Now, interesting one. What did I do? Well, we had Goldberg defeat Hollywood Hogan in 9 minutes 47 by pinfall with a jackhammer. Yes, Goldberg beat Hollywood Hogan clean in a bout that had fantastic heat and decent wrestling. 77. Maybe would have liked to lit something a little bit more than that, but oh well. Yeah, I, I uh, did the, the talk feature on in the game and asked Hogan if he wouldn't mind putting Goldberg over. And he promised one match 
one month. So that's kind of why I brought this match uh, further forward than I, you know, I think really I probably would have waited a few months to do this one and maybe put it, with, you know, in into a storyline. But, wow, this is going to give Goldberg a boost. I mean, he is already now up to Major Star. He has done it. We've done it. We've got him there. It didn't take long. <laughs> but with some of the stats he's got, it wouldn't have done really. But this is just going to really, like, shoot him up there in, in popularity-wise. 77, good match. And then we've got a promo from the Alliance, Sting, Bret Hart, and Randy Savage. And they're basically just telling the NWO to stay away from the title match. They have nothing to do with it. No involvement. Let, let Kurt have his opportunity. You know, let Sting defend his belt. You know, don't get involved. And this this really was just to, to kind of just... It's, it's like the pre-match promo, if you like, but it's not really. Sting does obviously mention Kurt and, you know... So he does sort of mention the match, but it, but it was mainly to kind of, you know, mention the NWO in here as well and just, just tell them to stay away from the title match. 74, what are we going to get for the match? Do you know what? Before we click on it, I'm not sure. Um, Kurt Hennig being well-known, I mean, it's all down to Sting. What can he do? 81, I'm pleased. I was really worried we were going to get a 60s, you know, like a mid mid to late 60s score so okay i'm pleased in a bout that had great heat and good wrestling sting defeated kurt hennig in 15 minutes 54 by a submission with a scorpion deathlock sting makes defense number two of the wcw world heavyweight title sting wins the wcw world television title rating of 81 yeah i am pleased with that um basically i'm retiring the tv title uh there is I know there's not loads of titles, but I just think two, two singles titles is enough. You know, you've got, you realistically, you've probably got six people who can win the world title, but you've got probably a good 10 to 15 that can compete for it realistically. And then the rest of the roster goes for the second belt. I, I don't think there's room for a third. I don't. I mean, I, I could be wrong. And there may be an opportunity later on where I think, no, do you know what? Actually, let's bring it back. But at the moment, I just want to stick with the world heavyweight and the US and just kind of see where we go from there. 81, um, that's a good way to finish. What do we get? 72. Okay. Not great. Not awful. Still, we've still got awful lot of work to do. Our roster is very still kind of you know well known recognizable heavy we need to get a lot more people up to that star you know and when i say a lot i don't want to overdo it but we're just short we're just short at the moment but there it is let's go behind the scenes for a little bit shall we okay yeah i don't normally go behind the scenes in this in this series or or not not very often oh my god look at this um <laughs> um a lot more why have I got him on my shortlist? Tony Norris. Ah, okay, yes, Armour Johnson. Right, I'm not going to deal with it now, but potentially someone I might look to to sign. Finished first out of two in the American Battle. That's brilliant. Um, WF made an offer for here. I won't. I won't go through all of these, but these are potentially people that I've put them on my shortlist for a reason. Yokozuna, I would prefer it if he got a bit fitter, really. It's doubtful I'm going to make an offer for him. Ray Trailer, one of our guys. Now, I might change my mind on him. There's other people I want to get over ahead of him. Uh, six, never really been a fan. And that's probably because of my bias against smaller guys. But potentially I might keep him hanging around. The Patriot I might look at. Uh, Tom Brandy, um, can't remember who, who he is. I, I'll have a look properly. I don't want to sort of, you know, bore you guys with all of this. Who needs time to heal? Saturn. Yeah, okay. Uh, JJ Dillon, opinion. Uh, uh, yeah. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we might have to rethink what we're doing with him and Rey Mysterio. Okay, we'll see. Um, Super Bowl eight viewing figures. I don't know if it's good or bad uh, without looking and comparing it to the, to the last one. Same with the buy rate, really. The importance has gone up. It is now 
rated as an above average event. Yeah, I won't delete these emails because I will have a serious look off camera. Decisions. First refusal. Hang on a minute. He's a graduate. Okay, let's have a look. Now, is he... Who is he? Uh, now, I, I, I've kind of recognised the name. 1998 graduate. Don't, okay, I know nothing else. I know nothing about him. He's very young, which puts me off a little bit. It's unlikely I'm going to take him on. But again, I'll, I'll deal with that off camera. I'll, I'll, I'll have a think. What I really wanted to do behind the scenes, uh, we made 1.8 million. Wow. We have... Yeah, that's what I wanted to look at, the roster. Um, I'm only really worried about in-ring talent. Any perception, in-ring role. Okay, that's good. And then I just want to sort of see if there's any, just by eyeballing it, any changes. Diamond Dallas Page has gone up to major star. I'm surprised about that. Bret Hart's up to star. That's what we wanted. Savage is back up to star. Ric Flair's dropped to star. Okay. A couple of good changes there. Booker T, I'm sure he's gone up to well-known. I'm sure he was recognisable. Possibly even Jericho. Yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, a little spoiler there. Look, Lex Luger, we're turning heel. Um, there is someone else we're turning, but they are not an in-ring talent. So I'm not going to give anything away yet. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So those changes at the top. All right. Gives us a couple of more options, maybe, for main events. Diamond Dallas Page back up there. Okay, all good. Don't think there's anything else I want to look at. Um, oh, I do want to retire the TV title. Current champion. Sting. Retire. I'm sorry. If any of you have got any ideas of what I could do with the TV title, bring it back, any plans for it, go ahead, let me know. But I, I think that's enough. I, I, I don't know. That's... I know it's very old school of me, but I watched wrestling hardcore between 1992 and very late 1994, and that's all the WWF had, and that's all I'm used to, and that's all I kind of like to book. But maybe we'll see. I'm going to end it there. Please let me know if you've enjoyed it. Give a like, give a subscribe. Thank you to everyone who has done so far. And yeah, any comments below are always welcome. Thank you very much to everyone who's interacted. I've, I love talking TEW. I could talk it all day. I, I really could. So yeah, I'm going to leave it there before I keep waffling too much. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.